Hello and welcome to my channel or welcome back. So today I'm going to share with you some of the books that I've just acquired recently um, which I bought from a uh, secondhand store that I usually go to. It's an online secondhand store called Books and Bobs. <laughs> I really love this bookstore um, because usually I could I could discover books that I would usually not find in any other stores in Malaysia, physical or online. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to share with you guys all of the uh, books that I have uh, bought so far. I bought uh, in two batches, um, two separate orders, but both of them have arrived. Um, so altogether I have nine books uh, in here. Um, anyway, um, this, you know, it's, it's morning right now. Um, you might hear some noise <laughs> in the background. I have, um, I think it was the daycare center just, uh, just over there. So you might hear some you know, sounds of children screaming or shouting or whatnot. <laughs> and also it's kind of cloudy outside. Usually I would, uh, do laundry uh, during this time. However, um, because it's cloudy, I can't really hang the clothes outside under the sun. Uh, it might rain also, so yeah, um, a little bit more free, <laughs> so to speak. So yeah, um, let me share with you some of the books that I've just acquired recently. The first batch, I have four books. And uh, the first book is Anita Lu's Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and uh, But Gentlemen Marry Brunette. Um, I have read Gentlemen Prefer Blondes before um, as a single novel. So this one is actually uh, a two-in-one kind of a book. Uh, it contains two, two books. Both of these are kind of like... Uh, uh, they are part of a series, you know, a, a two book series. Um, so yeah, the only one that I've not read actually was But Gentlemen Marry Brunettes. Now another thing that is kind of different about this edition is that um, aside from it being a combination of two books, it also contains illustration by Ralph Barton. And uh, just sort of let me show you a little bit, it might be kind of unclear but you have this kind of illustration in the book as well um, which you can also find oh my gosh it's dark <laughs> which you can also find in uh, in you know in both of the books both of the books have the illustration um, the version of gentleman Mary Blondes that I read before did not have that illustration so so it was just like text all the way so I think this one could probably give a slightly different experience. I really like Gentlemen Pre uh, Prefer Blondes by the way. I thought it was a really fun book. Uh, it had an interesting voice. Um, it was just uh, amusing and entertaining and I really wanted to read the sequel as well. Um, I would have preferred to buy only uh, you know, a book with just the sequel uh, but Gentlemen Mary Brunettes as a standalone but I found this at a low price, so why not? <laughs> and it had, you know, and it has illustrations as well. So yeah, it's 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 pretty good. Um, the next one, and I would say the next three books I have are pretty thick. Okay, um, this one is the first book of the Wheel of Time series. I've this is kind of like way beyond my comfort zone. I think. But I've seen the TV series and I liked it. Um, apparently, while uh, you know, I, I while browsing YouTube, I also found out that some people thought that the TV series was a, a failure in some way. You know, I mean, some people don't like it. I didn't click any of those videos because I intended to read the book and. You know, those people when they say that the TV series is bad, it probably because there is some kind of deviation from the book, maybe. So I don't want to click on those videos because I don't want to spoil myself with, uh, you know, any possibilities that, uh, but 
you know, potential differences that I might find in the book, you know, the spoilery stuff in the book. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know why people say that uh, the TV series is bad, but as a casual viewer, uh, someone who has not read the book, I really like the TV series. <laughs> Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it and so that kind of inspired me to try the book as well. Um, but yeah, this one is really thick. I'm not sure if I am going to be like really um, up for it, but yeah, let me know if you think I'm going to be able to be able to read this book. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, if and the thing is, while I was browsing, uh, when I found this book, I also found out that uh, the store had uh, subsequent books in the series as well. And honestly, if I have the luxury of space and perhaps money, I would probably buy the subsequent books as well. But since this book's pretty thick and I don't know if I'm going to love it, I sort of refrain myself from buying uh, the other books, <laughs> the next books. Um, so yeah, kind of interested to see how I am going to feel about this. Now, uh, this one is, like I said, it's a thick book as well. It's uh, Signet Classics, which usually sells their books in fairly um, low price, which I really appreciate. Although I sort of see that the original price of this book is $22.95. I don't know which year that was. 2010. I think it was probably from an American store. I don't know. But that seems kind of expensive to me. <laughs> Usually with Signet Classics I could get it like, uh, you know, new versions of your ring. So this one Anyway, this one is Theodore Dreiser's uh, An American Tragedy. Honestly, I'm not sure what it is about exactly, and honestly, I don't care. <laughs> but I'm just gonna read it a little bit here. An American Tragedy is the story of Clyde Griffiths, who spends his life in the desperate pursuit of success. On a deeper, more profound level, it is the masterful portrayal of the society whose values both shape Clyde's ambitions and seal his fate. It is an unsurpassed depiction of the harsh realities of American life and of the dark side of the American dream. Well, um, that was extremely enlightening. <laughs> which, which works for me. I don't really want to know the, 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 uh, the details of this book, so that fake description was interesting. <laughs> But anyway, um, I didn't choose this book because of the, dis uh, the description. Um, when I was browsing, I, I, I seldom read uh, the descriptions of the books um, on the catalog, on the online catalog, because I just couldn't care less. Usually it's because of the vibes that I'm getting from, from the book. So when I saw this book on the catalog, I was like, having this nice vibes about it and that is uh, that is how I uh, decided to get this one I mean yeah I'm kind of interested in this book it's it's interesting <laughs> that's all I can say about it this book okay the next one um, it is also interesting it is actually um, a a collection of four novels all packed in one a quartet <laughs> the Alexandria Quartet by Lawrence Durrell um, I think I have seen um, one of the books in this quartet uh, Justine uh, by Lawrence Durrell um, which was a uh, a book that Sean from Sean the Book Maniac read and I think he enjoyed it. Uh, I might have to check that again to see if he really did enjoy it. I think he reread it. <laughs> uh, so he probably enjoyed it. 
so if he enjoyed it, then it would probably be a good book. <laughs> um, so yeah, that sort of got me interested in this one. Now, of course, that was only one book. Um, I'm not sure how the rest of the books would you know, how, how he felt about the rest of the books. But in any case, I, I, I saw this and Justine is part of this quartet. Uh, so let's see what it says here at the back. In this world of corrupt glamour, LG Darley attempts to reconcile himself with the end of his affair with their dark, passionate Justine Hosnani setting alight a beguiling exploration of sexual and political intrigue that Durrell himself described as an investigation of modern love. Well, there's not much else I could say about this book, <laughs> except for the fact that it's big. But then again, it's, it's four books in one, so we'll see how it goes. I think uh, since I moved home, um, I have been experiencing better level of focus and attention, retention, and I, I, I like that. I think uh, this time around, I would like to try some thick books. I mean, I have a bunch of thick, you know, thick books in front of me, so um, maybe this is the time that uh, I want to just test the waters a little bit. I am reading one thick book right now, but I don't think I can read more than one. Maybe later, maybe next month or next three months. <laughs> anyway, that's it for the first batch. The second batch, I have five books. And so the first one is by Barbara Kingsolver. This one is called The Bean Trees. Now, um, I sort of knew that Barbara Kingsolver had a, uh, she wrote a, 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 kind of like a series of sorts, a series containing two books. And, um, this is, uh, one of the books in that series. This is the first book. Um, I actually got the second book, Pigs in Heaven, um, a while ago, but I didn't know that that book would be the book that belong to a series and also the second book in a series. Um, I've not read that but I'm certainly going to be interested in reading that book after I finish uh, The Bean Trees. Now what uh, happens here is that we have this girl or rather um, a young woman named uh, Taylor Greer and uh, she comes from a poor family in Kentucky, in rural Kentucky and after she graduated uh, high school, she leaves uh, her job from a hospital um, and she goes on a, um, sort of like on a, on a, on a trip. She, she, she buys a car and she goes on a trip to West, so West. Um, and on that trip, on the beginning of that trip, she sort of inherits uh, a child uh, given to her by a strange woman and now she has to deal with having to take care of a child while being a poor single woman um, traveling on a car by herself so um, that sounds sort of interesting um, and it was kind of interesting when I was uh, browsing all of the books that I ordered in the second batch um, I actually just sort of flicked through the pages a little bit and the next thing I know I read all the way until the 26th page <laughs> when I already have five books in my currently reading shelf I just had to add another one <laughs> and yeah and also this book is kind of light I really like books that um, physically speaking are light you know it's light and the cover is also kind of floppy like this. I, I really like it. Um, it's not the most attractive um, books, kind of books that you could you know, put on your shelf to make it look pretty. I mean, hardbacks can do that. I mean, hardbacks are always more, you know, they are always more elegant. But as far as reading goes, and especially now that I find that my left hand has been sort of 
feeling kind of numb probably because of how I hold books and phones a lot ever since I moved back home I've been reading more than usual so I've been holding books a lot do you have any tips I don't know my my, my hand feels kind of numb um, you know left hand and so it it, it feels um, friendlier to my hand my left hand my left arm this kind of books hardbacks feels like they are there to antagonize my left arm <laughs> anyway this is uh, the bean trees the second book in the second batch this one is really thick again because now I feel more fire to read thicker books and this is by um, Helen Hooven Sandmeyer this is called and ladies of the club now this book is is not a collection of a few books it is that long <laughs> it's about 1,000 more than 1,000 pages long and um, apparently it says here over 50 years in the making an undiscovered American classic now an international bestseller. I have not heard of this book before, but when I saw it on the catalog, I thought it's 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 kind of interesting. Um, I think this is more of a uh, domestic fiction, uh, and let's see what it says here. Um, from the chaotic aftermath of the civil war to the social turmoil of the 1930s, a warm intimate yet epic tale of two remarkable women in a small Ohio town of their fellow members in the Waynesboro Ladies Literary Society and of their men, their children and their grandchildren. Uh, from girlhood to matriarchy through wrenching battles for suffrage and prohibition to images of distant battlefields and loved ones lost forever and ladies of the club brilliantly interweaves a century of American history with the individual joys, crises, and tragedies of the town and its people. So um, I think this is kind of like one of those books that uh, may, probably mainly because it's written by a woman. Uh, people would sort of consider it as, you know, the uh, rather... It, Unflattering, it has a sort of unflattering connotation of, you know, the, the phrase women's fiction uh, or a women's novel. I personally sort of like that kind of novel. No, not that I sort of like, I like that kind of novel. And I feel that um, those novels really uh, uh, deserve more um, spotlight on them. And not just by Oprah's book club. <laughs> Certainly more spotlight on those books uh, from many other sources as well. And yeah, um, it just so happens that many of those books are kind of... Uh, some of them are given the spotlight by Oprah's book club. And so that's why I don't really... Um, I don't really have any opinion about books that have the labels of Oprah's Book Club because they're usually the kind of books that I uh, would be interested in reading. Now this book of course does not have that label but I think it also has that similar vibe to it. It sounds like the kind of book that my mom would be interested in reading as well and um, I occasionally would read her books, the, ki the kinds of books that she has um, although she does not really read a lot these days, but um, yeah, this is certainly the kinds of stuff that I'm really interested in as well. So, yeah, but it's really big. <laughs> the next book is a uh, recommendation by Sam from Paper Notebook. So this is The Storied Life of A.J. Frickery uh, by Gabrielle Zevin. Um, A.J. Fikri's life is not at all what he expected it to be. He lives alone, his bookstore is experiencing the worst sales in its history, and now his prized possession, 
a rare collection of Poe poems has been stolen, but when the mysterious package appears at the bookstore, its unexpected arrival gives Fikri the chance to make his life over and see everything anew. And the, the texts are quite big. Uh, the spacing is... Uh, yeah, the spacing is quite big as well. And this recommendation actually came to me when um, when I was asking for books that I could read uh, if I feel anxious, you know, the kinds of books uh, uh, to try uh, when I have overwhelming anxiety. Because usually I can't read when I'm anxious. And so uh, she recommended this book alongside another book called Sourdough by Robin Sloan, which, by the way, I just acquired recently. Um, I think it was last year. So um, yeah, um, it's it's. I I don't feel that it's the kind of book that I would have read um, a few years ago. But I think I'm certainly going to be very interested in this one uh, right now. Hi. So. Um, Okay, so this 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 footage might be different in terms of lighting and its angle. Well, that's because the previous footage, uh, while I was recording, uh, it just stopped recording by itself because apparently the space on my phone uh, has reached <laughs> the maximum. Anyway, I'm gonna start from uh, where I would probably snip the the, the previous footage when I edit the video later. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to talk about the next book. Uh, this is by James Kelman, How Late It Was, How Late. And this was a recommendation by Ed from uh, Gagging for Lit. And the recommendation actually uh, was, uh, was when I was asking for a book written in dialects. I realized that I do enjoy books written in dialects. And this book was written in the uh, Scottish dialect and I think this book is about a man getting drunk and something happens when he sobers up. <laughs> One Sunday morning in Glasgow, Sammy, an ex-convict and sometime shoplifter, awakens down a lane after a two-day drinking binge. Friday is a blur and Saturday has disappeared altogether from his memory. Unwisely, he gets into a physical altercation with some soldiers, but when he next revives, uh, he's in a jail cell, badly battered, and he slowly discovers completely blind. And things don't get any better. His girlfriend has disappeared. The police are questioning him and playing every kind of cop game with his head. His stab at disability compensation catches him in the Kafkaesque coils of the welfare bureaucracy. Sounds interesting. Um, a bit more details than I need. <laughs> so I'm gonna move on to the next one. Um, this is by Anne Michaels, uh, The Winter Vault. I read uh, a book by Anne Michaels before and it was called uh, Fugitive pieces, which I enjoyed. Um, so, this book, I'm not sure what it's about. The description is really long. <laughs> um, but I actually read a few pages in this book. It does feel uh, quite, it feels quite nice. Like the kinds of vibe that I got from Fugitive pieces, uh, you know, that kind of. Um, poetic but at the same time doesn't feel like it's really overwhelming like overwhelmingly symbolic or metaphorical it's just it's just it feels very clear you know I, and and the language feels like it's it flows really easily it goes into you um so that's the kind of stuff that i really like but yeah just look at what the book is roughly about uh in 1964, a newly married Canadian couple settles into a Nile River houseboat moored below the towering figures of Abu Simbel. Avery is one of the engineers responsible for the dismantling and reconstruction of the temple as it's rescued from the rising waters of the Aswan Dam. 
He is a machine worshipper, yet exquisitely sensitive to the dichotomy of creation and the destruction of machines, of which machines are capable. Jean is a botanist by uh, evocation and passion, interested in everything that grows. They had met on the banks of the St. Lawrence River and watched together as the construction of the seaway changed the course of the river and swallowed towns, homes, lives. Now, at the edge of another world about to be lost forever, Avery and Jean create their own world, exchanging the moments that are the mortar of our days, innocent memories we don't know we hold until given the gift of the eagerness of an another. So, that's it for all of the books that I have acquired recently. My wonderful book haul. <laughs> and I'm quite excited, by the way. Anyway, that's all for this video right now. Um, let me know if you have read any of these books, if you have any thoughts about them, um, or if you are interested in reading these books, uh, or any other things that you want to say um, in this video. So, I'll see you again in another one. Take care, thanks for watching, and bye!